All right, so welcome back. Uh, this lesson, I'm calling it primary CSS selectors. Uh, that's not a real word. I just kind of made that up. It's like the things that you use just all the time, right? So we're going to do some primary things, and we're going to do some advanced things. So the primary things that we're going to do, first and foremost, we're going to use CSS that uses the ID, class, or tag properties, because uh, that's the main way that you find things, right? So I'm assuming that you've seen this before, uh, but I want to just say it just to make sure we're all on the same page. So what we've got here is we've got a little body, right? And you can see that this, this body is here. So there's a heading, and then there's a paragraph, and then there are two divs. And what we're doing is we're showing you the different ways you can reference things. So this top one here is by tag. Uh, so this says, hey, look for all uh, the paragraph tags. You'll notice that with, um, with a tag, um, you just say the letter P, right? There's no dot before it. There's no number sign for it. Just the letter P. So you just say what the tag is. And so what this says is this says, hey, make every paragraph uh, on this page be read, right? So you can see that there's one um, paragraph on this page. Uh, and so it's read and it's using a tag to do it. The next one is uh, using an ID. So an ID is a property uh, that an element can have. So it's got the ID. They should be unique on the page. Um, and whenever you give something an ID, so here it's green ID, if you want to specify it in CSS, you have to put uh, a number sign in front of it. Um, so here it's number sign green ID. And I called it green ID just to kind of make the point. Uh, and then the third option is class. Uh, class, it's hard to see there, but there's a dot. So this is a dot, um, and I called this class blue class. Now, of course, you wouldn't really use names that say what it is inside the variable name. I'm just kind of doing it for an example here. And you can see that this is a blue class. As just a reminder, classes, uh, you can repeat them on as many elements as you want on a page. You can also have as many different classes as you want within an element. Just leave a space and add another class. IDs, however, are they should be unique on the page, and each element has one ID, right? So they're... They're very, very different in terms of the one-to-one -one and many-to-many -many nature of them. So these three, uh, they're easy, uh, but but they're how they're how most CSS works, right? In addition to tag ID class, there's also different combinators. I love that word combinators. I say it wrong all the time, though. Um, so let's learn a little bit about combinators and what they are. So combinators are a way to combine um, two selectors and make them into one selector. The most common uh, combinator, I'll just kind of show it here, is a single space. So this says, look for ULs, and then within the ULs, look for the EMs. Um, so if you wanted to see what this guy is going to affect, it's going to affect this guy here. So what it does is literally it has to find a hit uh, for the first one. So it finds a UL. So nothing over there is a hit. Nothing in there is a hit. Notice that's an EM, but it wasn't a hit. Ah, and then, and then here's a UL. And then what it does is it only looks in his uh, children uh, for an EM. And that's not an EM. And text, text, uh, that's an EM. Um, so everything inside him is going to be the color red. There's a couple different combinators. <laughs> I said the word wrong in there. Um, and so let's just kind of talk about, there are four different combinators. Uh, let's just talk about what they are. Uh, so the first one I'm going to mention of the four is uh, the descendant uh, combinator. So this is the one we've seen already. Uh, let's just look at it in another example. So this is a main. Uh, so it's looking for things that are within main uh, that are divs. Most people actually read these from right to left, actually. So it's looking for divs. So it's going to turn divs magenta. That's the main thing. And that div has to be in uh, something that has the class main. So you can see that there's the class main. So all of a sudden, we're only looking inside this block. So anybody that's not inside this block is, is ignored, right? And then inside this, we're looking for any div descendants. Uh, so there's a div uh, that's inside of here. And then there's another one. Um, so you'll notice it doesn't matter what level they're at. If I, if I wanted to go to the time, I could draw a tree here. And it wouldn't matter uh, where in the tree, just as long as it's somewhere in the tree uh, would cause a hit. So that's the uh, descendant, uh, where you leave a space only uh, combinator. The next one is very similar to that one. Uh, this one's called the uh, the child combinator um, or direct child combinator. 
and that's if you leave a greater than symbol, I guess it's a greater than symbol, I can never remember that, uh, a greater than symbol between them, you can leave spaces before or not, I think you get the choice. Uh, what this does is this looks for only my direct children. So this is the same rule as before, so that I'm looking for divs to make magenta that are inside main. The only difference is that I have to be a direct child. So if I'm looking inside, so here's my hit on main, so I'm literally just looking at um, you know these four items. So that one was text, nope. Uh, this one's a div, so yes. An article, a span, and then it doesn't look at any children of children. So it only looks at your direct children, not your great, great grandkids, right? So you can see that only that one um, took the magenta color. So the other thing I wanted to say about this direct child combinator is that if you can use it, you should. There is an efficiency boost. If you happen to know that something is a direct child, feel free to use it because it does help the efficiency. Uh, it just it's better for the browser. Um, but to be honest, if you're worried about that your stuff might change over time, then just use the descendant one uh, because then even if you wrap it, it'll still continue to work. So that's the direct child uh, combinator. The next one I'll mention just kind of in this combinators uh, section is when you leave no space, you just wham the two things together. Uh, so here's an example of what I'm talking about. Um, what it does is it looks for an element that satisfies all of those constraints, right? So here we said if anybody's uh, got the big class, make them big. If anybody's got the blue class, make them blue. If anybody's got the big class and the blue class, underline them. So you can see the uh, the hits on this, right? So blue was a hit there. Uh, it was a hit there. Um, big was a hit here and also here. Funny that I happen to use blue to denote big. Um, and then you can see the big blue text. Um, it matched both of them because it actually had both of those classes present. Um, and so that's one way that you can use this no space. It's not really a combinator, uh, but I'm just going to kind of call it that. And you can use these, by the way, not just with two classes wham together. Um, here we've got a tag um, slammed together with a class. And to be honest, this is how people write it a lot, just because I think the syntax looks better. So it's specifically looking for things with the tag P uh, and the class small. So this is a match. Um, and then, so it made the font size 50%. And you can see that that's small over there. Next combinator we're going to look at, this one's, to be honest, it's kind of more advanced, but I just wanted to throw it into the same area. Uh, this is a sibling combinator. There are two types of si sibling combinators. There's the plus, uh, which means that it must be directly adjacent. And then there's the tilde, um, which means that it just has to be downstream uh, of that sibling. And uh, it can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be right next door. So to kind of read this, um, so here I'm looking for a span that comes directly after a div, right? So if I'm looking for, so the thing that's going to go magenta is going to be a span. because It kind of starts at the right. Um, so here I've got a div um, and then an article and then a span. And then right after I've got a direct div span. So you can see that this one is a match, right? So it's a match because it comes right after a div. Um, but then this top one is not because it comes right after an article. However, if you use the uh, the other version of it, so it's any sibling, uh, you can see that there are two matches, right? So this span is a match and this span is a match because they have a, a sibling uh, that comes before them that's a div. So to be honest, I don't actually find that one all that useful, but I wanted to go for completeness uh, with my combinators. Uh, so I wanted to just go ahead and tell you about that as well. So let's just go ahead and kind of look at an example so that we can practice reading these things. Uh, so this is just a silly example. And the way that I would read these is, is kind of from right to left, right? So the first thing I'm looking for is I'm looking for a span um, which has the class required. So that, that's the thing that's going to get, uh, you know, these properties. And then you can see that I've got a any descendant combinator. So then this span that's required, it has to be a child of a paragraph tag that is directly after a div with the class content, right? So I've got to have a, a div with the class content and then a paragraph tag right after it. And then inside that paragraph has to be a span with the class required. Um, and this div, oh, by the way, this div, it has to be a direct child of something with the ID header, right? So this is a silly example. I just kind of wanted to get uh, practice reading these crazy complex things. Now, to be honest, usually, the person creating the HTML is the same person 
that creates the CSS. And crazy things like this are completely unnecessary because honestly, like let's say you wanted to turn something green, you would just go into the HTML and add a class of green to the things that want to be green. And then your CSS rule would just be looking for things with the class green. And there's no reason for these, these crazy complex things. There are times where you're working with somebody else's code and you have to do some crazy things. But to be honest, most of the time, the simple things work. Other thing I wanted to say, the reason these are so important is because jQuery actually uses the exact same selector system, right? So inside jQuery, you'll actually use the same selector system that you use with CSS. So it's really nice that you learn one skill that you can use in two places. The next uh, thing I wanted to tell you about when I'm talking about uh, combinators uh, is not really a combinator, so kind of like the no space. Uh, I guess it's a delimiter. Um, so if you had, let's say you had, you know, you wanted all um, spans that were direct children or divs that were direct children of spans uh, to be magenta, and you also wanted um, divs that were within the footer uh, to be magenta, and any articles to be magenta. There's no reason to write out three different rules. Uh, there's this little trick you can do to where you just add a comma, and then you say a completely independent uh, selector after it, and it just applies this rule uh, to any matches in those, right? So it's really a shortcut for keeping you from typing the same thing three times. And so if you look at this, you can see we've got a a uh, div that is a direct child of a span that was a match, um, a div that's within a footer, uh, somewhere in the footer, happened to be a direct child, but didn't have to be, and then any article, uh, all those guys got the magenta color. All right, that's it for this time. Uh, we're going to do some examples next time. I know the lecture is not a great way to learn things. we got to do some examples. Uh, so come back next time, and let's do some examples. See you then.